blue skies call. They seduce us, pulling us irresistibly upwards, reminding us to fly our own line, on our wings, and in life. We are the seekers, adventurers, being one with the air, feeling everything and nothing at once. That's the magic we chase. Follow the call. Find your pure wild flight with NZ Aerosports. Coming straight from the cockpit, it's another episode of Lunatic Fringe with the fucking pilot. All right. Ready, set, go! Back in the can for another edition of Lunatic Fringe Into the Void. Only the second person ever to be in the studio. So, uh, welcome. Thanks. But who the fuck are you and what do you do? <laughs> uh, name's Simon Whittle from the UK. And uh, yeah, now a professional skydiver in the Middle East. Nice, nice. So you jump out of airplanes for a living. Exactly, yeah. Tandem video, do AFF as well now and then. And uh, a little bit of free flight organizing. Nice. Yeah. So kind of the whole mix of everything. Exactly. I'd say cheers, but you can't drink. You got Correct. stuff going on. <laughs> I b- bought you the beer, a skydiver that turns down beer for fuck's sake. Well, I'm going to drink. <laughs> you, dr- you drink away. <laughs> so um, as is my normal with the show, I jump everybody back to the beginning of their skydiving career, yeah. how they got started, what they were interested in, and, and uh, uh, any other extreme sports that might have aimed you in that direction. So how did you get started in the sport? Um well, yeah, I used to do like skateboarding quite a lot and uh, like mountain biking in the UK, like downhill and dirt jumping. But I'd always wanted to skydive. And then it was my 16th birthday. I got a tandem mm. and that was just like, yeah, this is awesome. I really? want to do this. Yeah. And you did that in the UK? <laughs> that was in the UK, yeah. Pretty hard place to become a skydiver though, isn't it? Correct, yeah. And because uh, I chose to learn it while at university, it makes it even harder because that starts in September, which is the start of winter. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. yeah, at university, I joined the club and it's massively subsidized in England for that. And uh, yeah, I started doing the first jump with Static Line out of an Islander. I don't know if you remember that plane. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. What is that? I'm, show, I'm showing my age. That's one of the only things slower than a Cessna at altitude, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> but I didn't know any better, right? Sure. So everyone was like, oh, it's slow. I'm, like, oh, I'm pretty excited about jumping out. So. Right. Um, and then, yeah, started doing the Static Line. I got up to dummy pools. I think I did my... I didn't do my first free fall, though, because it went into winter and the weather was so bad. And I kind of got a bit bummed out by the whole thing. And then also because of university stuff, I didn't have any money or any of that. Sure. So I actually stopped doing it for a couple of years. Oh, really? Yeah. But then I joined... Um, it's a thing called the University Air Squadron. So it's kind of like the RAF Voluntary Reserve. Okay. And they do free adventure training. And part of one of the stuff they did for free was skydiving course. Really? Yep. So very luckily, in my third year of university, I went to a military drop zone and finished the whole static line course there, a place called Neverhaven in the UK. So the static line, uh, I'm, uh, I've had Junior on a number of times, and he used to be a static line instructor, yeah. and I know the basics behind it, but I'm a tandem yeah. kid, you know? <laughs> I mean, I did my first uh, uh, three jumps were tandem because I did the AFP program, Okay. Um, which was, for me, a super easy program. You do the tandems yeah. where you're pulling, and you've got shit to perform, and of course, we know now as instructors that the student trying to do the turns and all that stuff doesn't do much, but you know he's yeah. doing the level. But the static line, how does that transition into, because just doing the the delays, you're not really learning how to fly your body. No, nah, it's pretty crazy now. I don't, I don't know if anywhere still does static line. I don't know. But at the time, they, I think they just started doing AFF in the UK, but this was just the way people learned. It may have been a hangover just from the military. Sure. Time. But yeah, the whole, everything was just arch, arch, arch. <laughs> And then you jump out and it opens for you, right? Right. You know your emergency procedures. And then you have to do two stable exits, whatever that means, because you're on a static line. (laughs) Right. And then you have to do three dummy pulls. So they put a fake uh, ripcord. And then you have to pull it after like one second, I think it was, and do three in a row. But if you mess one up, you have to start again and do another three. Well, so you're you're uh, doing a fake pull, yeah. uh, and, but then the static line is still deploying. Still you, right? pulling, but there's an instructor in the door, and he's like, "Oh, did he pull his shoot in time? Did he <laughs> did he look like he's panicking, or did he look like he actually did the proper Jesus. thing?" But then from that to your first three second delay free fall, it felt completely different. Well, yeah, like completely different. Well, and I would think mentally, just knowing, "Fuck, there's nothing's going to open this this time." Yeah, yeah, it's it's really weird. It has to be. I yeah. mean, I, I would equate it to being the difference between um, learning how to um, get your free fall skills up to speed now as opposed to when there were no wind tunnels. Yeah. 
I mean, it just seems the natural progression now is you're going to go learn some of the basics in a wind tunnel and then take it to the sky. But I mean, wow. Yeah, because I think from a safety, like, you could probably take someone with zero training, close their eyes, and throw them out on a stack line. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Like, they're going to, the parachute's going to open. So I guess that was maybe their rationale, but it does not prepare you for free fall. So you do three seconds, then five, and then you do 10 seconds with turns. And I just got into a mad spin because I'd never been in free fall. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it got stopped, and then I had to repeat that. But yeah, it's not the way to go, definitely. Wow. Well, so, I mean, you get through that, which, it, and it always astounds me, someone that goes through, especially if it's a, it's an experience like that, that you continue on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is something <laughs> I want to do, clearly, because it For seems pretty reason. freaky. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, that, it almost seems like that would be a, a great ad for not. Well, they don't do it anymore. Maybe there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the training and the ability in, in flying and instructors has gone so high now. Yeah, I think it's definitely changed a lot. Since, I mean, this was... 2001 mm. 2002 a few years back so i'm not even sure if they do it anymore in the uk no. <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> now what did the what did the family think of your starting skydiving uh well but i think my parents got it for the my birthday and they probably thought i'd take it up as just a hobby and that was fine sure and, and that was a hobby until 10 years ago <laughs> <laughs> so that point was fine but i think now it's become my job maybe they regret sure. buying that tandem i don't know now you said you were in university <laughs> what were you studying uh, maths and physics yeah. <laughs> all right i yeah. mean i suppose you could find some parallels between math and physics and and skydiving but not in a practical I think, sense i think the parallel is in the university club it was a lot of nerdy kids who were like maybe wanting to do something to be cool <laughs> that was maybe the vibe <laughs> fair enough well, now yeah. where, where were you going to take uh, uh physics and i had no idea really i just i kind of knew i wanted to go to university and i was good at maths and physics so that's basically why I picked it. It always astounds me, and I've said it a million times before on the podcast, the varied backgrounds of the people that I talk yeah. to with jumping. Um, it, you just never know who's been doing what. Yeah. I mean, there's some astounding talent out there outside of skydiving that kind of chucked it all yeah. to go jump out of airplanes. Crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it really is, but it, it really is a testament to um, how cool skydiving is, yes, but it's also fucking addictive. It is. There's an addictive property to it, definitely. And a, not only the actual jumping, but the lifestyle, I think, is addictive. I think and the lifestyle more than anything, right? Yeah. It's the people, man. I like sure. The, I've met such a wide range of people working in this industry. Yes. And lots of just interesting people. Yes. Who, who are happy. Cause, yeah. Because I've done boring office jobs, and everyone's miserable. It's, uh, it it's the ones that are, are doing the, the trailer life 20 years into it and still digging every single jump yeah. and so dramatically happier than the friends that I have with the five-bedroom, four-bath houses. And it's funny, right? <laughs> it's it's kind of funny how it all works out, and you kind of get a main line into what happy can really be, which is kind of cool. Yeah, true. It, it really is. It's uh, I mean, granted, I know happiness is a state of mind, but... Yeah, sometimes it makes it a little easier to get into that state of mind with something like this. Yeah, I can agree with that, definitely. So you, you started out doing the static line stuff. Yeah. You somehow managed to keep going through Straight that. myself through the um, course. <laughs> where did you take the, the sport from there for yourself? So that was, yeah, the last year of university, got my A license, I think it was called, in the UK. And then the club was really fun. We had some really good friends there that I'm still, I still talk to now. And, uh, yeah, we just go jump at the weekends, mm. just do, like, cannonballs or donuts you know nothing sure sure <laughs> particularly the funnest jumps for sure for sure and then i think i got up to i did it a little bit after university i think i got to jump like 60 mm. and i just couldn't afford it anymore and i had this dream of being this like badass skydiver and i was like it's just not going to happen i can't right. afford it tunnels weren't a thing then sure and uh i kind of gave up for a while and I had to save up because I was doing my pilot's license. So it's like, I need to do one or two of these. One of these things. I can't sure. do both. Sure. Yeah. Well, in flying, especially in the UK, and is it mad expensive? Yeah. Fuel is through the fucking roof. I mean, what are you paying, or what were you paying per hour for a plane? I think it was an R22 helicopter. Oh, heli- oh Jesus, it, even more expensive. Uh, oh, man. 200 pounds-ish. It, it, again, this was early 2000s. An hour. Yeah. That's... I mean, fuck, when I started getting my pilot's license many, many years ago, I was still paying, I want to say, 50 or $60 an hour yeah, that's wet crazy. For, for a Cessna. Wow. And that's still a lot of money. I, I mean, but by today's standards, that's fucking cheap. That is super cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Those flying dates are not, 
that what I had envisioned being a, becoming a pilot never yeah. did. <laughs> no, I bet that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you did the you had to pick jumping or flying, and you chose flying for a while. K- kind of, yeah. It was there's some other bits and pieces in there, but pretty much, yeah. And then um, the school I did it with had a deal. It was like if you did your PPL and your hour building there and your CPL, they would substitute that like a help pay for it okay and then you would work for them afterwards for free sure which is awesome because you guaranteed sure. work build up your hours and also subsidizes your training yeah, yeah so yeah i did that over the space of two or three years while also doing like some office jobs i worked in a call center for six months <laughs> cold calling people really yeah what were and you that selling was, uh it was like a data entry program i think i tried to wipe it from my memory i think <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, that was, I remember sitting a few times like, what am I doing? But yeah. like I was chasing the dream of being a pilot and stuff. So it is what it is. Yeah. And then eventually got the commercial license and then that was my job for like four years. So you flew? Yeah, flew mm-hmm. helicopters. What time of flying were you doing? Uh, Jet Ranger. I was flying like tourist flights around Wales, which is in the UK, and people to horse races and business <laughs> meetings and shit like that. <laughs> and you did that for four years? Yeah, pretty much. Did the, the shine wear off the penny to so uh, speak or? combination so i think as most probably aspiring pilots i'm like oh sick air ambulance or like search and rescue in the mountains mm. and kind of get this thing where it turns out that's actually quite hard to do sure so a lot of it is ex-military for a helicopter pilot sure it's not impossible though people people do go that way um but i kind of hit a bit of a brick wall with my career and then the financial crisis happened in the uk Aye. and that really affected the helicopter flying that i was doing People sure. weren't paying for like pleasure flights anymore. Business weren't paying for their people to go for meetings around whatever the UK and sure. it kind of died down. So I had to like, that became part time and then back to like office jobs like data entry and all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, flying. I mean, yeah. I, I, obviously over the years you get a lot of people asking what it's like or, or uh, um, they think because I'm not flying an airliner that I'm not a real pilot. Oh, yeah? Um, oh, yeah. That's yeah. funny. What type of flying do you Oh, I fly skydivers. Oh, so, but, like, can you get a license to fly the big planes? Same Amazing. license. <laughs> Same license. But, it, I mean, it's, uh, um, you go into it thinking one thing, and then you get into the thick of things and find out that, oh, yeah. this is not what I expected. You know, I mean, even at my experience level now to try and shift into a different type of flying and go proper airline um, would take me years just to be considered hireable. I'm not qualified right now. Wow. I go up and down over the same place. I don't go anywhere. You know, Uh, so it's tough, right? And especially after a financial crisis when nobody wants to pay for the toys. Yeah, exactly. Fucking hell. And aviation's such a like right time, right place kind of thing. If you ride the right waves, it can be an awesome career. And oh, I did yeah. have a lot of fun flying. Sure. But it was just a few things added together and it kind of started going downhill. Now, when did you decide it was time to go back to jump? <sighs> well, so actually, I was when I'm looking for a part time job, I started working at an outdoor assault course. A bit like Go Ape. I don't know if you have that in America. It's like yeah. in the trees, whatever. Sure. So I used to rock climb a bit. Cool. So I was doing that. And then my friend Mike, who I used to skydive with, Mike Brig, uh, he got a job at the new wind tunnel in Manchester. Oh. And I didn't know anything about wind tunnels. I right. I'd kind of pushed skydiving aside. I missed it, but almost didn't want to talk about it. You know? mm, mm. <laughs> in denial that I'd let my dream go, whatever. Yep. yep. Um, but the place in Manchester was actually really close to where I was working. So I went there one lunchtime. He said, come die. And me and Mike grew up skydiving together, so we were kind of the same. We barely couldn't sit fly. <laughs> and then I go there and I see him doing a demo and he's flying around head down and it, it blew my mind because I didn't know anything about wind tunnels. Right. And I was like, I fucking need to... Sorry, can I swear? <laughs> no, you can cuss as much as you I want. I was just like... I don't know if jealousy is the right word, but I was like, fuck, I, this guy is... This is what I wanted to be doing. Sure. And so like, I just like... Singular goal is like, I am going to be a tunnel instructor because I have a lot of spare time. I need a part-time job. Sure. Um, sorry, helicopter was part-time fly. I need a full-time job. Sure. And that was like the spark that like right i'm gonna do this right now. that's awesome well it's yeah. funny when you see somebody that you were coming up with of the same basic generation yeah. doing <laughs> all the things that you thought you were going to do and it's uh, i don't know if jealousy is the right word it's a <laughs> mix of love and hatred all at the same time i was stoked for him <laughs> yeah i was like that's awesome dude but <laughs> exactly exactly and it's very difficult to break that down that you're so proud yeah. of someone that they've got these amazing achievements but you kind of want them to hit the wall too because you're like fuck me man i should be doing that <laughs> was that i thought felt like 
I could because we were both very similar in our skill level. When we, I was like, I know I can do that if yeah. I can do it. Yeah. But I'm doing a job I don't like that much. Sure. Well, I had somebody uh, um, equate uh, learning how to fly well in the tunnel, because I'm not a great tunnel flyer, um, uh, to learning how to play an instrument, like a guitar. And they say, well, yeah, you're pissed off that you can't fly like that, but do you have any idea how much time this guy or girl has put into learning how to fly like that? And it instantly made my flying like shit be fun yeah oh yeah no no i suck because i have next to no time in the real tunnel so yeah. this is this is entertaining now yeah. you know so you you decided that was it that was it you yeah. went after it yeah but that's that's a good point you said because i think a lot of people when if you're a good flyer and then you say you're a tunnel instructor like oh you you just worked in a the tunnel they don't see because there's a lot of tunnel instructors that aren't that amazing at flying sure they're, not that they're not talented they're good they, instructors they, they're just not bothered yeah but the guys who you see are really good in the tunnel, they they are committed to flying as much as they can, paying yep. for time to yep. filming everything, watching the debrief, like just studying all the coaches and yes. soaking it up. Yeah. So anyone who's a good flyer, even whatever their job was, you should be like, okay, good. You have <laughs> to be that dedicated or yeah. you're not going to And you have get to have there. respect for that level. It's oh, not God given it's... to you. No, no, no. Free it, tunnel time? Yes. It's but... it's uh, as different um, a type of flying as airline flying is to jump flying. Yeah. It's just a different kind of flying. And yes, a lot of the skills from the tunnel translate well into the sky and some vice versa. But if you're a great skydiver, you're not necessarily going to be a good tunnel flyer and the same way around. Yeah, you know, so you gotta earn it for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and those guys, I mean, the dedication. Now, anyone who's like the super good ninjas, uh, they put a lot of effort in to oh, get that good. Guys like Raf, for yeah, fuck's he's, sake, he's ninja. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I swear to God, I think he can eat, sleep, and shit in the tunnel <laughs> and yeah. just keep on going. He's, oh, he's a monster. One, one of the best for sure. One of the best in the world, and there's a reason for it. Yeah. yeah. So, what did you you? Did you hunt them down? They were working. You managed to. So I sent. So I spoke to. I think I went downstairs that day and, or the next day and spoke to John, the manager, because Mike was like, oh, "I'll introduce you." And I mm. spoke to him, and he's a really nice guy, John Rogers. Um, but he said, "Yeah, we haven't got any places at the moment." Like, okay, no problem. Here's my CV. And then every month, I think first <laughs> or second, I can't remember exactly. I was once a month. I'd be like, "Hey, have you got any job?" And I bothered him for a year. <laughs> And then eventually John was like, look, I think he had enough of me. He's like, yeah. hey, there's a position on reception. I don't know if you're interested. I was like, yes, I am 100% interested. So then they trained me up on reception. And I just worked there for three months. And uh, while we're doing that, we used to get staff flying for like non-instructors twice mm. a week. Used to go to that all the time and just like loved it every sure. second of it. And then, yeah, three months after I started there, a guy called Adam left. And they were like, hey, you want to become an instructor? I'm like, Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Uh, I just had uh, uh, Ray Kubiak on for the oh, second yeah? time around. Okay. Nice. So Ray, anybody <laughs> that knows Ray, if you didn't watch that episode, watch that episode. <laughs> Fucking dude is hilarious, and he's also just this incredible OG flyer. Yeah. Uh, but he said the same thing. He went into Flyaway in Las Vegas um, because a friend of his worked there and went to try and get a job and showed up in some like disco suit and tie uh, to get the job, <laughs> and they hired him for the front desk. And that same day. He's like, I want to do this. I want. I want to work as an yeah, instructor. Yeah. Same fucking thing. Yeah. yeah. So he pushed his way in there as well. That's now it. the modern t- uh, uh, instructor training is pretty hardcore, isn't it? Yeah, and it was used to be more hardcore. Really? <laughs> yeah, they've calmed it down a bit now. So I was kind of. I did mine right at the end of the what I thought was too hard. It used to be basically beating people up for like a month in the tunnel, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I mean, you'd get good instructors afterwards who are very strong and good at spotting. Sure. But it was it was too much. And then they, now it's much better. Like, yeah, it's hard training because you've got to be fit and it is pretty dangerous. You know, it's a hur- sure. hurricane in a tube and uh, you've got to put yourself on the line. If you take, like, I don't know, like some old woman in there, pretty frail. Yep. You need to be willing to, like, get in the way and catch them and stuff sure. like that. Sure, sure. So, yeah, the training is it's really good. It's like a month and we used to do it overnight. So I do that and i'd also work reception at the weekends which was just killer but i had to because i had to pay rent whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you got to get it done yeah and then yeah qualifies instructor and then <laughs> the next day i did a reception shift even though i was a qualified instructor and then i started being an instructor and it was awesome i loved every second of it now that was uh, um w- it, it, correct me if i'm wrong but the rating starts out as you're taking people off the street uh, yeah. initially and then you get more and more qualifications to learn how to work with correct. flyers exactly Nice. Yeah, it's changed a bit now, but when I did it, it was I was a level one instructor, so first timers, 
and teach belly and backfly. Okay. It's kind of funny because I can barely backfly myself. <laughs> teaching, they changed that a bit now. So. Did you find that teaching improved your own skills? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And the course is like a lot of the course isn't flying, it's walking because your job is to like be right. solid on the net. Right. Because if you're not on the net, if you're flying, there's not that much you can do. Where if someone like flips upside down up high, you need to be able to get there catch them and be strong on your feet sure so loads of walking lots of drills moving around the tunnel fast lots of catching and uh, that's kind of the bread and butter of the, instructor <laughs> the walking it's the i'll fly in the modern tunnels now and i'll have a lot of fun and i can get up on my head and and uh, uh from the net and and uh sit fly yeah and i'm fine in all of that yeah. and if i cork i can recover i can yeah. fly on my back so it doesn't matter how bad that is that's fine it's the getting out the fucking door <laughs> yeah, yeah. every single time. Okay, do you see the lights going in there, waving yeah. at you? And I'm like, here's where I'm going to fuck it up again. And I've done backflips into the wall. Yeah, and man. Everything you can think of just trying doors to get out the fucking door. Door's a dangerous place. <sighs> Most of the accidents yeah, I've seen have been there. Yeah, yeah, because you get confident and you make that step without thinking about what it's yeah. going to do. And that really teaches you that every little movement you make in that tunnel has an yeah. effect. And, man, you've been walking for however many years it was. And you go in there, you got to do it. The exact opposite. Yeah. You want to go forward, you got to lean back. Yes. So when you're like, oh shit, the lights are flashing, I've got to get out, you reach for the door, lean forward every time. Boom. <laughs> so sure you've funny. done it. I've done it. Of course, of course. <laughs> and seen done. it. Well, that's one of the funny things too is you see the really experienced uh, um, uh, um, flyers still every once in a while fuck something up. For and, sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, I hit the wall now and then it happens. <laughs> you don't go to the race to watch him go around in circles. Yeah. You watch him hit the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. So now when did it trans uh, transition back into skydiving as well? Um, so, yeah, I think I was working the tunnel. From what I remember, I got my instructor rate in, I think it was March or April. And then I actually worked, oh, I think, for almost a whole year before we started jumping again. Okay. And I think I did a year so I could fly head down and stuff. And then Mike was like, we should go skydive now because you haven't jumped for eight years, I think it was, oh, maybe, wow. maybe seven years. Wow. And we'll go out and we'll do a head down jump first. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> so we went back to our home drop zone car in the plane with a, with a massive rig. I'm not sure they knew what we were going to do. Right. But yeah, we just hucked the head down exit out and we just carved around on the heads and it was like a daydream. I was like, I can't believe this. This, is, this was the dream and I've not skydived at all to get wow. here. It was like, Isn't that it was crazy awesome. though? It is crazy. And it felt fine. It was, it was awesome. There's part of me, and I've used this analogy before, that jumps back to the old uh, skier versus snowboarder. Uh, mm. I hate those fucking guys. Get <laughs> off my mountain. You're destroying yeah. my moguls and all that stuff. Um, and then the raw appreciation for being able to do something like that. Uh, and again, it's, it kind of clicked when I realized how much goes into becoming a good tunnel flyer. Yeah. And it took a little of the sting out of the fact that some guy with 50 jumps just outflew me. Yeah, yeah. And then I've got thousands of jumps at the time. Yeah. Um, but, but when you break it down to one minute at a time, he's up there and jump wise. You yeah. know? At 10,000 jumps, if somebody with 3,000 jumps came out and out free flew me, it wouldn't bother me that much because yeah, you'd assume yeah. that's all they did. But when you got 10,000 jumps and somebody with 200 jumps comes yeah. and shreds you, you're like, look, motherfucker, this, is, <laughs> this shit's not cool. <laughs> but then you realize, you know, you get it to fly in the modern tunnels and realize, okay, no, an incredible okay. amount goes into learning how to fly well in the yeah. tunnels. And there's the crossover on, like, uh, so rock climbing. That used, there used to be no indoor rock climbing, so you would cut your teeth sure. outside. And these guys who are, like, gnarly and strong took a lot of time to get there. Now you see like a 15 year old kid who's been in the gym for five years, who's yeah. way stronger than I'll ever be. Yeah. And I could catch myself being like, motherfucker. <laughs> but then I'm like, hang on a sec, that's exactly what I did. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. And there'll be something when I'm older that the skydivers do that we don't do now. And I'd be like, man, I wish I had that. Yeah. And I'd be like, bastards. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, the, it's the, just, that's my life, eh? For sure. Well, and yeah. the biggest favor I did for myself is realizing that it's not only okay to suck, it's yeah. it's fun. Yeah. I like knowing that chances are I'll be the one to fuck up the skydive we just <laughs> planned because it takes the pressure off. Now I just get yeah. to go have fun. Nobody's looking to me to lead anything. As long as I'm safe, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. So y you go out and you make this jump. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously you're doing quite well with that. Now yeah. when did you decide, all right, I'm going to do both. I, now it's time to get back into jumping and putting gear together and – not a huge amount. I wasn't getting paid a great deal in the tunnel. That that's just tunnel. that's just the way it is. Sure. And I lived in Manchester. The rent wasn't super cheap, um, so I didn't jump that much. We went to Spain once. Got out of Spain, like four or five of us from the tunnel, 
I did like my hundredth jump there. I remember. I actually remember we. I was in the about to take off. I had ninety nine jumps, and they were like, "Oh, it's a hundred jump limit." I was like, "Well, <laughs> technically, when I jump out, it's my hundredth jump, jump, so that means that's okay." <laughs> and it was Mishka was there. She's like, yeah, but do you think that's sensible? I was like, all right, Mishka. <laughs> so I didn't jump. That's then, actually pretty good, though. Yeah, no, it is. I was just being a bit cocky. But yeah, the next day I did my 100th jump. And then I think I got up to about 120 jumps. And I've been in the tunnel two and a half years. But the weather's awful in England. The mm. amount of times I went to a drop zone and didn't jump. Sure. And I could fly in the tunnel, like, any, any weather, any time. Sure. Used to get, I think it was 30 pounds for 10 minutes. So it's pretty cheap. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Just go buy time. Fly yeah, around. for sure. So yeah, I didn't jump that much in the UK, actually. I probably got less than 100 jumps in England. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. That's why so <laughs> many fucking Brits end up in the States working. Yeah. I don't. That's when I first discovered uh, um, how many illegal alien uh, British there are running around the United States when I got to skydiving, yeah. and all of them were like looking for wives or or this or that. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fucking funny. Yeah, yeah. So sure. um, what'd you do? You decided it was time to move on from England? Um, so I was doing full-time tunnel and then part-time helicopter flying. Mm. And then um, my friend, Mikey Davey, he moved out to the Middle East. Mm. My bad. <laughs> Back in the day, the first time, the first tunnel in the Middle East, it used to actually be run by Airkix, the company I worked for. Okay. And their instructors would come out for six months at a time. And Mikey was one of those instructors. So back in the day when that was happening, he knew all the people here. Mm. And then they kind of got a choice. I think they got offered, right, you can stay here. We're going to, Air Kicks isn't going to run it anymore. We're going to run it ourselves. Or you can go back to England and do that. And he went back to the UK to be the manager or assistant manager in Manchester. Okay. Okay. But I think he regretted that. And he was friends with one of the guys out here. And he mm. eventually managed to get his job back here. Nice. So then he was working here. And then I came to visit him on holiday. And it was similar to when I saw Mike in the tunnel. I was like, wow, this place is pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> Huge nice. tunnel. Yes. Staff were cool. Yep. And, uh, yeah, the guy, Freddie, the boss, was like, hey, man, I, I kind of want to work here. I had an impromptu interview <laughs> nice. right there. And then, uh, yeah, he said, no, there's no spaces. And funnily enough, a month after I got back, someone quit. <laughs> and he said, hey, look, do you want to come out in a month? <laughs> and then he said, don't tell me now, think about it, because it, it meant giving up helicopter flying. Mm. I, I didn't know much about aviation here, but... I was under the impression it'd probably be quite difficult to sure. carry on the flying here. Sure. So that was a bit of a tosser. But I remember my dad was saying, let's go at least for a year. If you don't like sure. it, come back. But you'll kick yourself if you don't try. Of course. Of course. Well, and, and I mean, flying is so weird nowadays anyway. Um, yeah. Even for, you know, established pilots all around the world, especially with COVID and everything that's going yeah, I on. I imagine. The, the, yeah, having a career in aviation is pretty difficult. But I mean, yeah. you're, how old are you? 36 now. So still young, for fuck's sake. I yeah, mean, if you want to go back to flying, oh, dude. I mean, if you want to go back to flying, you've got years before you yeah. need to really start thinking, I need to go back in that direction. So why the fuck wouldn't you, you yeah. know, take gigs around the world and, and start working that way? Yeah. Now, when did uh, um, you, you worked in the, the tunnel in the Middle East and then decided yeah. to, you were obviously jumping more? Yeah, so part, we used to get, uh, I think it was, yeah, five jumps a week for free mm. at the drop zone, which is crazy, working in the tunnel, getting free skydives. Sure. So I used to just start doing that. And it, it would just completely change when it's sunny and warm. I'd only ever jumped in, like, not very good weather and was used to sitting at the drop zone for hours. Sure. So it was a complete mental shift. And I was like, yeah, you want to do seven jumps a day? Like, really? And then everyone here was so good and nice. Like, there were so many sky gods here. Right. But not, no arrogance. They were just super stoked to help. and Yeah. I was like, I can't not jump here. I've got all these people around. Sure, sure. And yeah, they'd come fly in the tunnel, then I'd come jump in the sky, and I'd just, yeah, just jumped as much as I could while working in the tunnel. Oh, you can't beat that. Yeah. Well, and with the rock awesome. stars that you'd have access to, I mean, guys like Omar jumping all the time. Yeah. And, yep. and uh, Olaf Zipser was here for quite a while. Yep. And the OGs. <laughs> absolutely. You know, I mean, the originals, and then Team Airwax coming through all the time, and the yep. current world fucking champions at the time coming yep. through. And I mean, how do you not, you know, take advantage of that talent? if you can yeah i remember because i i was getting a lift to the tunnel with uh, noah banson mm. I, I had no idea who he was <laughs> so he's giving me a lift he's like oh, i said you jump i said yeah I do and i was like you jump a bit he's like yeah jump a bit just super mellow and then we struck a base jump in i didn't know anything about him yeah and i was like have you base jumped he's like yeah i've done a bit i kind of like it yeah and it just he was so cool about it because he could have been yeah i've done all you don't know me blah 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 all right. 
But he was so chilled, and then I found out later who he was. I was like, ah, that, that's awesome. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, well, that was, it's great, though. Well, and I, I think they also kind of know that, uh, oh, somebody's going to clue him in on that. <laughs> uh, we had a ground crew person that didn't know who Omar Al-Hijalon was. Okay. And I'm like, well, that's Omar. I'm like, yeah, who's Omar? I'm like, really? You don't know who <laughs> yeah. everything you've ever done in skydiving? He was part of the crew that, like, it, right? came up with that shit. I'm like... That's him. Yeah. He didn't look that old. He's not that old, but neither is the sport. Yeah. I mean, the sport's True. pretty fucking young, really. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you were, so base jumping, you you ended up getting into that as well. Yeah, that had been a dream since, like, that was part of the reason to get into skydiving. He used to always watch people who my generation will know skydivingmovies.com. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, there wasn't YouTube. Oh, shit, I'm age. But yeah, there was, you could go there and watch, like, cool base jumping videos. And it was uh, Jeb Corrales, like uh, Paint It Black, yeah. and A Year in the Life. Those two videos just were like, that is so cool. I yeah. just want to do that. And uh, when I started jumping a lot more here and I was surrounded by a lot of base jumpers, mm. it's like, okay, this feels like maybe this is the right time to get into base jumping. Nice. And then, um, yeah, me and uh, Matt Munton actually did our first jumps together at, nice. at Brento. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Uh, see, that's bizarre. Yeah, Again, that funny. ties in how, how tight the sport is and, and how small the community is, yeah. too, because Munting now is yeah, yeah. fucking him and Scalabrino are rock stars. For well, we were, um, me and Matt, plus Danny Roman and a guy called Ryan Dudridge were on a dynamic four-way tunnel team <laughs> in Flight Dubai. So we used to go around doing these competitions. Sure. And then one of the competitions, because with in-flight Dubai at the time, you couldn't get more than two instructors off at once. Right. But we could get four off because we were going to a competition. So sometimes we're like, yeah, the flight's a bit late or whatever, and extend it a few days. So after the first competition in Russia, we went, all of us, to Brento. And Danny had jumped before, but yeah, me, Ryan, and Matt was our first jumps in Brento. That's cool. Yeah, it was, it was sick. <laughs> well, and, and Brento's kind of gauged in the base jumping world towards learning, yeah? Yeah, like, it's different schools of thought whether you should do a first jump there or not we probably maybe we shouldn't have but um yeah we learned to pack in dubai and then yeah it probably was a tiny bit risky but <laughs> got away with it <laughs> well it's fucking base jumping <laughs> yeah true <laughs> i mean there there was a time not all that long ago when just the idea of base jumping itself was crazy and now there's yeah. a, a safe way to do it yeah i mean the first time <laughs> i saw the base tandems i almost lost my oh, shit man, that's crazy uh, uh I'd still, I don't know how you guys feel about it. I don't know how I feel about that. I really don't. I mean, base jumping is an individual choice, and I know the passenger's making that choice as well, but if they're not a jumper, do they really have the, the do they have yeah. the information they need to make a, an informed decision? Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that either. I don't know. I mean, it, I, my opinion doesn't really matter. Yeah. So more power to them, you know. I think as long as the they're honest with the customer what they're getting into then it's all good <laughs> this shit could go sideways yeah. really fucking but if quick. there's any like dishonesty that's oh, super safe it's totally safe then that's when it's not cool uh, yeah well that was always the thing right even in skydiving when i started shooting uh, tandem videos and then doing tandems in the late 90s it was uh, if anybody asked you if this danger is dangerous your answer is fuck yes it's dangerous people <laughs> die all yeah. the time doing this yes because I don't want nothing's coming back. And this is back when um, there were a couple of pretty big tests to the waiver in regard to lawsuits oh, yeah. and such. Oh, yeah, big time. Um, so it was, uh, you were bluntly honest. Yes, people die. Yes, I know people that have died. Wow. Yeah. In tandems. Um, well, yeah, you wouldn't. So they'd ask, has a tandem died? No, a tandem hasn't died. Ah, okay. Your odds are this. But yes, skydiving is dangerous. But people you were saying die. that to the tandem passengers? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Because <laughs> it was the same thing, right? If yeah. you're getting ready to do a tandem base, that person really should have all the information. Yep. Statistically, yep. here you go. Yeah. This is, this is what could happen. Because I don't know too many people that get into base jumping that don't know. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> this shit's pretty sketchy. Yeah. You know? um, obviously, it went well. You're sitting here. Yep, survived. Yep. <laughs> so you've, you, how many base jumps do you have now? Uh, like 150-ish, maybe. That's a lot of base jumps, though. Yeah, and that was that was a lot of that was just in a couple of seasons. So we did that time in Brento. We did four jumps, all slick. Mm. And then that summer back in the tunnel, and then we would all bought crew suits, like a one-piece tracking suit. And then we jumped that loads at the desert um, and uh, got good at that. And then the next season, that's something we went to Brento again, a few slick jumps. And then we started jumping the cruise. 
and I think I did 60 jumps in like a couple of months. Just Jesus. Yeah, Brento and then Ladebrunen. You can do like six or seven a day at Ladebrunen. Yeah, I've been Easy. told. I've been told it's, <laughs> it's like crazy. a ski yeah. lift. It's crazy. You just buy one pass for a month, and then, yeah, just up and down, up and down. <laughs> That's just so crazy. Yeah, well, it was crazy. It's awesome, though. I mean, especially coming from the States where it's so restrictive, and there's so few places to legally do it. And it's a lot like drugs. They don't seem to understand that making it more restrictive just makes it more dangerous. Yeah. It really does. Because now people are going to have to be, they're going to do it. It's the same fucking thing. Yeah. They're going <clears> to <throat> do it anyway. You're just making it more difficult and hence more dangerous. Yeah. I mean, they had to, um, the one guy years and years and years ago um, that Frank was his name, that uh, base jumped El Cap, uh, landed and was getting chased by the, that story yeah. and drowned. Yeah. What a fucking stupid way to die yeah. when it should have just been a, hey, waving at the Rangers as you're gathering your stuff up. Yeah. It's, it's just ridiculous. So it's unfortunate that it's pushed to that level because it's still got this stigma behind it. And yeah. people climb and, and die in, in the valley all the goddamn time. Yeah, Climbing is... Climbing is just as dangerous in my, resp in my yeah, opinion. It can be. Yeah. Like for sure some types of climbing. Like uh, like free soloing when you're without ropes. That's probably similar to how base jumping is to skydiving. Yeah. Like you can climb reasonably safely. as You can skydive reasonably safely. Yeah. But free solo is like, yeah, it's like base jumping. It's pretty dangerous. Yeah, skydiving now, honestly, you try and tell people and they'll ask how dangerous is it. And you, as a long-time skydiver, I, the standard every day going to go out and skydive heads up jumper is pretty fucking safe. Yeah really is. You and know, the gear I mean, is like as good as it's going to get maybe oh now. It's amazing. God. Well, and now the innovations that they come up with. I've had a lot of the uh, uh, the NZ Aerosports crew on um, talking <laughs> about designing the canopies and yeah. stuff and how much further th can they go. And Julian's like, long way. Yeah. So I'm part of me is terrified to see what they fucking come up with next because <laughs> yeah. it's already nerve-wracking watching modern canopies coming down. Yeah, they're crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah. And when you see someone on a proper swoop from a distance and the canopy and, and the pa the pilot are just at the same angle going yeah, balls right. out, that's some insane stuff. Yeah, it's full on. Yeah, yeah. Well, but still. Well, so you kind of went old school as well recently. You yeah. were you were strapping a board to your I feet. I did. I started sky surfing oh, for some hell. reason. Fucking <laughs> hell! What spurred that interest? I wish I could. Remember. I think I think it was a TV advert at some point as a kid. I don't know. What, I don't remember exactly, but I just always thought, man, that just looks really cool. And I used to skateboard a lot, mm. so maybe that was also part of it. Sure. And snowboard. It's like yeah, I just I can do the board sports. I might as well take it sure. into the sky kind of thing. Sure. And. Um, yeah, I never didn't have an avenue into it, but I actually sold a canopy in the UK. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. I sold a canopy to a guy called Dave in the UK, and he came to pick it up. And we were just chatting, and he used to be a sky surfer. Oh. I was like, oh, I always wanted to get into that. And he's like, well, dude, I've got an old board I don't use. If you want to come out to my house sometime, I'll show you the board, and I can give you some tips and all this kind of stuff. Really? Yeah, so I was like, you know what? Sometimes that comes your way. Sure. So, yeah, I went to his house, and he, it was a big board. It was like this big on the video yeah yeah carbon fiber thing but it had the bindings on like the dac iron binding sure and he gave me this little cd of like how to sky surf <laughs> and some webbed gloves web gloves yeah yeah and, and we chatted a lot and he was like this is too big but helped me tell me how to build a board sure and put the bindings on and i was like you know i could build a board and then just i used to get free tunnel time in the middle east tunnels so i was like, i'll just go fly in the tunnel sure. loads because there's no skydive coat uh sky Surf. surf coaches yeah as far as i could find in the, in the middle east so yeah he gave me this board and i left and then i came back home and uh yeah got a piece of wood cut out a rough shape which i thought was about <laughs> the right size and so on my research which was hard to find actually sure a lot of it was you should have your feet like a like duck style mm. for the first one because then you can pull on your belly sure i don't know why i decided not to do that I did it this way straight away, but not on a very big board, like a wooden one. Right. Maybe this much past the toe and the heel. I was like, sweet, got all the bindings, got it all sorted. And then, yeah, went to the wind tunnel with it. And man, I scared the <laughs> shit out of me. I was there with uh, Kai Kai okay. in the private tunnel. And so t wind off, went in on the net. and was like, okay, start turning it up. And there's, oh my God, it's like a wild animal on your feet. And then the sit wasn't, too bad sure i was like okay this is okay as soon as one on my back it was like someone holding my ankles to turn me around 
uh, man, ever since I have mad respect for anyone with 200 jumps oh, yeah. who jumped one of those things. Yep. Like that's that's gnarly. Yep. That is not. I flew in the tunnel at least an hour or two before I even thought about taking it out of the plane. <laughs> in that call. In that call. Yeah. My, well, I started uh, like using my tunnel, what I learned of how it completely changed my skydiving. Sure. Like maybe I can apply this in some way to, like I can't, like the how to open and all that kind of stuff, sure. but just the physical flying the board, if I can just tick that off in my head, sure. then I can leave the plane more confident. And of course. Of probably course. Probably like, yeah, be in a better At least position. have it dialed in, at least so you kind of know what's coming up feeling wise. You're going to yeah. have a general idea. That's yeah. uh, that's how my sky surf partner back in 95, she started jumping the board, but we were both tunnel instructors at Flyaway. Ah, cool. Um, so she would fly the board in Flyaway. Ah, nice. She had a, um, a bit of an advantage because obviously she's much smaller and lighter, so the board yeah. gave her enough lift, but she was webbed gloves and a sit uh, jacket to, to do it. Wow. Um, and by the time she jumped the board for the first time ever, I think she probably had, I want to say, less than 200 jumps. Yeah, that's, um, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, less than 200 jumps. And when she and I competed in 96 in the Nationals, I think she was jumping, I don't know if she was jumping her Surf Flight or a Tom Stanton, but a proper board. And we took the silver. Oh, yeah, there yeah, it is. Yeah. That's awesome. And she had, I think both of us had less than 350 jumps at the time. I've seen an old YouTube video of you and her. What's her name? Uh, Mary Tortomasi. Mary, you and Mary, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When from... I was Googling Sky Surf, I found yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very strange. Very, That's awesome. very strange. It's, it was super cool. But it yeah. was really neat, and it's still very neat to see people that are bringing the board back out and jumping it. I think I've seen Sean McCormick doing a few jumps yeah, on it. Yeah, some and... really nice videos of him jumping. I mean, McCormick, for fuck's sake. He, <laughs> I think he's kind of what broke the sport. Oh, yeah? He came up with the Invisible Man, which was okay. such an intense fucking move yeah. that it was... Uh, you need to be willing to do this move to score points or you're kind of out of the running anymore. Oh, yeah. And it just kind of took it next level. You know, okay. Someone they were duct taping their arms and stuff to stop Sean the McCormick. Point. Yeah, the first time he did the Invisible Man. And uh, when he came out of it, he had to obviously extend his arms to stop the spin. Yeah. And he just blew out all the blood vessels in his hands and was blowing out the blood vessels in his eyes Jeez. and stuff. And so it, it, he could barely feel a handle when he went to pull. So he was duct taping his arms so that he wouldn't blow everything out. I heard that. And it was... I thought it was a no. joke, but no, just, uh, yeah, multiple yeah. sources. Yeah, <laughs> pretty pretty hardcore. So yeah. I, when you're duct taping body parts to compete, nah, yeah, you know. <laughs> And uh, Tanya and Craig O'Brien, who were arguably the best team ever to sky surf, kind of did a little bit different, and they had such finesse um, that she didn't have to do these insane moves. She just okay. did all the moves she did with such style nice. and made it so fucking easy in these flawless transitions. But the spins weren't so fast that you were hurting yourself. So yeah. kind of took it next. Nice. So how did you start uh, instructing in the sport? Uh, in skydiving? Yeah. So... Yeah, we were working in the tunnel, and then uh, there was a bit of a problem with the whole organization, basically. Mm. There's budget cuts. Sure. So they got rid of a lot of staff at the tunnel. They unfortunately had to let go of half the instructors. Uh, they did it in a nice way. I don't, they didn't want to do it. Sure. But because um, I was one of the higher paid ones, if, I think five of us lost our job straight away. Ouch. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, man, what, what am I going to do now? Because I, I, sure. it was no idea this was coming. It was just an email the day before coming for a meeting tomorrow morning. Right. And then I was like, this can't be it. And then I think I spoke to the HR lady who I knew. And she's like, yeah, I think you guys are going to get fucked. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> just completely out of the blue. So like spun me a bit. Sure. And then I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. And then um, I got I got two things happened. I got uh, to the desert drop zone. They heard. And they said, well, look, maybe we can get you your tandem rating here. And then you can work for us for free doing tandems. Sure. And then maybe something will come up. But everything was so fluid at the time with people losing the jobs and sure. teams that it's no guarantee sure um but my part of the when i got fired I, my visa was still valid for three months mm. it's like well worst case i'll stay here do my tandem rating yep. and see what else kind of comes up sure so did that and then started doing tandems at the drop zone just for free just to get experience and at the same time i had a friend who works in australia for a perf wind tunnel okay and they needed a chief instructor and they said, do you want to maybe come out and do this? Oh, wow. And then I, was, I really thought about it because that's, you know, it's good for my career. Sure. Um, and then I had this job, right, should I risk maybe getting a job doing tandems, but right. maybe not, right. or take this guaranteed job in Perth? So head was like, well, Perth, but heart was like, I, I really like skydiving. Sure. So I actually turned down the Perth job before I had a guaranteed job 
And then luckily, at the uh, other drop zone, they hired me and Matt Munton. Nice. We, we went for a team interview. <laughs> so we went there to, like, uh, that film, I can't remember what it's called, Big Brother or something? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so we went there together with the interview, and the boss was like, so you guys, yeah, yeah we come as a pair, so you're going to hire kind of both of us. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And we had, we had like 30 tandems. Really? Yeah. But uh, this is a good sign for why you shouldn't ever burn bridges. So when, when we lost the job, like, we were really annoyed. And it's very tempting to shout at the bosses, oh, you, you suck, blah, 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 I hate sure. you. But there's no, never any point. It's not their uh, choice to do it. Sure. It's just the way it is. So when we got the job, before we got the job, the boss rang our old boss from the tunnel because mm. they're best friends, which I didn't know. <laughs> and they said, hey, Matt and Simon are here. Should we hire them? And the guy... Very thankful. He's like, yeah, they're really good instructors. You should hire these guys. But if we'd have told that guy to fuck off, he would have said, that. don't hire him. Yep. Because of him, they hired us with like 30 tandems. But they would never normally hire someone with that little amount of tandems. But we'd been work, we'd been jumping at the Palm uh, the sure. Middle East for ages. So we knew everyone. We'd been jumping at the desert. They knew us. You know, sure. They knew we were in the tunnel. So it kind of worked out in the end. And then, yeah, started. That was five years ago. December 1st. How crazy so is that? Five years ago. And then now I'm assuming thousands of tandems later. and Yeah, I think I had a thousand jumps when I started. I have 8,000 now. Jesus Christ. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Man, Tandem that goes video. fast. Very fast. And that's with a big break this year in 2020 too. That's this uh, this sport too, though. It's such a small sport. If yeah. you if you nurture relationships instead of burning bridges, it yeah. goes an awfully long way. Yeah, an you, awfully long way. Because you never know, and it is a small no. community. And like I, I tell you, it's easy, right? When I got fired, it was like I was emotional and annoyed, and you want to avenge that on sure. someone. Sure. But it's they don't want to do it. No. It's just they've been told from wherever to do it, and it's like. The only time in this sport I ever um, benefited from uh, having a shit reputation from somebody was uh, a guy by the name of Eddie Carroll in Vegas decided he didn't like me anymore. (laughs) And I didn't fucking much care for him. And I was trying to get a job at Cross Keys. And John Eddowes, by the way, for everybody watching, um, it was really sad to hear that John Eddowes passed. Um, And condolences to the family and everybody. It was... I don't know if you knew John. No, I didn't know. Jesus no. Christ, this guy built the drop zone that was... Oh, yeah? It will either be pleasant memories or haunt me for the rest <laughs> of my life. It was that epic. Yeah. But uh, he got a call from uh, Eddie Carroll. Uh, or pardon me, he called Eddie Carroll asking, hey, what do you think of this guy? And Eddie's like, don't ever fucking hire that guy. <laughs> he's just, he's a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. And, and John ended the call by saying, cool, thanks. I'm going to hire him right away. Oh, yeah? And this is the only reason he hired me Amazing. is because Eddie Carroll said, fucking don't hire that yeah. guy. <laughs> so thanks, Eddie. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Funny, um, hey? But for the most part, yes, you've got to nurture those relationships. Yeah. It's just such a fucking small community that yeah. works in this sport. Yeah, and that's like I tried so hard to get that job at the tunnel. Yeah. And it, I remember because, so I think three months after I got my instructor rate and they needed five new instructors. Mm. And uh, they got some of the guys and I was chatting to one of them, oh, how did you get this job? He was like, I was, I was just walking by and I saw they said help wanted. And I just walked in and he got right. off for the job the week later. I was like, God, I hate you. <laughs> you got yeah. no idea what I went through to get yeah. the job. But that's awesome. <laughs> for sure. No, I know it really is. And well, and that's the other thing too is is you enjoy seeing people get breaks as long as it it's uh, a good person. That, you know exactly. I mean? Yeah. And, and, and we got a big break to get the job at the Palm. Yeah. Like a lot of people probably thought that wasn't a good idea with the amount of experience we had. I, I, yeah, shit goes either way, man. I've yeah. seen really, really extremely experienced people shit the bed and yeah. do a horrible job. And then I've seen low timers that are working so much harder to make sure that they do it right. Yeah. So it's kind of, it, it depends on the the type of person that you get. Yeah. Yeah. And they knew us on a personal level. We got on with everyone already. It's a huge deal. And then we knew, they knew we were good at what we did. Yeah. And, uh. Well, yeah. that's the thing. If you're going to mix well with the team, most of the stuff you need done is fixable if they're not up to par. Yeah. Most of it. Um, but if they don't work well with the team, then it doesn't matter how good they are. It's not going to work. True. So, yeah, I agree. So I always ask people towards the end of uh, every interview, and especially in your case because you've, you've had so many different uh, angles to yeah. getting into things, <laughs> how do you recommend for first-time jumpers that are jumping and thinking about trying to get into the sport working-wise, what do you recommend they should be thinking about? Yeah. And for people that are kind of hitting that burnout phase and wondering if they should keep jumping, what advice yeah. do you give to them? Um, I think 
yeah, for new people, if you want to work in the sport, you've always got to be a bit cautious if it's like your main hobby, working in your hobby. It can sometimes sure. take away from that. So that's something you need to think about. But uh, yeah, jump as much as you can. Like talk to people who are experienced, you yeah. know, who've been working in the industry. And uh, yeah, I think camera and AFF is a good way to start. Sure. And um, yeah, don't be in a rush. Like enjoy the early skydives. That's the best part. Yeah. Like if you can afford just to do it for fun, do that for a while yeah. before you get into working in the industry. Cool. <laughs> and yeah, if you're getting burnt out, get a sky surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to That'll be wake the, you up. <laughs> the best advice people give is if you're getting burned out, try something different. Yeah, totally. Sky surfing is definitely yeah. different. Or have like <clears throat> a break. I had a force break in 2020. Sure. 10 months I didn't jump. And uh, it was good. It did me good in the end. For sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah, me too. I mean, I took quite a substantial break and, and didn't start jumping again until uh, Junior uh, asked me to go make a fun jump. And the idea of it made me nervous. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, skydive? Yeah. I had fucking, you know, 10,000 jumps at oh, the wow. time. And I'm like, oh, fuck, that actually makes me kind of nervous. It must be time to go back and jump again. Yeah. And then I became an average level fun jumper. And that's all I ever want to be. Nice. And, which is great. You just go out and fuck, this is just fun again. Yeah. You know? I, can, I, I had to adjust that because I used to have to do the sickest jump, but now I can just go and do, as long as I'm just doing a jump, it doesn't matter what it is, I'm having yeah, fun. It's absolutely. great. I don't need to be doing the badass angle with blah, blah, blah. No. Just go and have a laugh. Absolutely. Well, I never carry a camera, so all my jumps are amazing <laughs> anyway. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it makes it perfect. Well, Simon, thank you so much for taking thank the time you, to sit down. No problem. It's always good to catch up to jumpers, especially people that have had unique entrances into the yeah. sport and, <laughs> and kind of taking different lines to it and clearly still have a passion to do it. So thank you very much thank you sir appreciate it no and guys worries. thank you again for joining we will see you next time on lunatic fringe see ya bye and there you have it another episode of lunatic fringe into the void brought to you as always by and say it with me fuck yeah nz aerosports head to nz aerosports.com by Pussfoot. That's right. Head to Pussfoot.com, the Extreme Sports Collective, and check out everything they've got to offer. By Summit Parachute Systems.com. Jarrett Martin and the family cranking out amazing pilot rigs, as well as incredible rigging courses. And as for us, the Lunatic Fringe is now on YouTube. That's right. You're going to have the chance to put faces to the audio by heading to YouTube.com and looking up the Lunatic Fringe podcast. It's easy. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Check out all the amazing videos from the previous guests that we've had as well as new and upcoming interviews on video as always i am the fucking pilot head to the fucking pilot.net or the princess pilot.com thanks for joining we'll see you next time around